Today on the Locked On Hornets podcast, Brandon Miller ties a career high but looks pretty upset on the bench after another blowout loss to the New York Knicks. Plus, Clifford has had enough. He gets tossed from the game, and LaMelo misses more time due to that right ankle. That's all today on the Locked On Hornets podcast. You are Locked On Hornets, your daily Charlotte Hornets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. In a minute, cuz, we live. We live. This is Locked On Hornets. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and you get $150 in bonus bets. Guaranteed. Visit fanduel.com forward slash locked on. To get started, thanks so much for making Locked On Hornets your first listen every day. We are free and daily wherever you get podcasts, including on YouTube. I'm Doug Branson. You can get more of my work on my Substack, Every Hornets Box Score, at everyhornetsboxscore.com. You can also join our Sicko Brigade on Subtext, join subtext.com forward slash locked on. I'm usually joined by Walker Mail. He is busy interviewing Greg Olson. He's big timing the show right Whoa. now. Said I can't do the show. I've got an interview with one of the most talked about guys in football right now, Greg Olson. So make sure to check that out on WFNZ Wes and Walker 12 to 3. So alongside me as usual on Tuesdays is David Walker coming to us from yes. a much different location if you're watching. Do you on hear the YouTube. choppers behind me, Doug? <laughs> I'm out in the field today. Uh thank you for man, your service, I David. We really appreciate yeah. it. You look like you're coming I didn't, to us from somewhere in the Gulf. I didn't realize the hat and the backdrop would be identical. But yeah, this is to symbolize <laughs> um, you know, I don't know, the, the Hornets fans banding together. Uh, a a Band state of, of emergency. A state of emergency. That's right. A band of brothers. Ever heard of it? Okay. Let's talk. Let's get into it. Let's talk about this uh, latest loss uh, by the Charlotte Hornets to the New York Knicks. We're going to uh, tell you what happened and then quickly shift into a major positive from this game. Final score 113 to 92 in favor of the New York Knicks. This was going to be a difficult game from the jump, even though New York was without. Some of their major pieces, OG Ananobi, their recent trade acquisition was a late scratch, but we knew Julius Randle was not going to play because he uh, dislocated his shoulder. He's going to be out several weeks. So some advantages playing towards the Hornets' favor, but as always, the Hornets had some injuries. LaMelo Ball, Gordon Hayward out as well as Mark Williams. Want to touch on the Ball absence, second straight game for him a little bit later in the show. Uh, but the Hornets still can't do it, still can't overcome the size, the defensive issues that they've been facing lately. A, a bad third quarter really led to uh, this loss. Ultimately, they kind of hung tough through the first half. Very similar story to what we've seen most of the year. Zero offense from the bench. Uh, the only scoring from the bench coming uh, from Nick Smith Jr. Two threes in the second quarter. That was it. That was the bench scoring for yeah. the Hornets. Uh, before we go to Brandon Miller, David, what did you see uh, in this latest defeat? Well, you know, I mean, uh, PJ, after his big game, uh, bounced back and was at least serviceable. I mean, honestly, that was something I was looking for him to just completely fall off the cliff after going for 43. But he was. That's typical. You know, that's been his typical story. Yeah. Yeah. And was able to fight. But, you know, man, first of all, the Knicks are tough, obviously, even without their guys. Uh, they still have Jalen Brunson out there who will be an all-star this year. They still have Tibbs, and they still play hard on every possession. And, like, at this point, the Hornets, they just don't have the horses. Uh, it, it's starting to look like, you know, the, the taking away of Terry Rozier f- emotionally has drained this team. And, obviously, just not having your talent out there, you combine that all together, you're not going to be able to beat a, Nick, a Knicks team uh, whose fans fill up half of the stadium and you know is 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 gearing up for a big playoff run after the all-star break well they leaned on him so much in third quarters and fourth quarters and second halves in general to generate offense when no one else could and now it's just a situation where they're they get into situations where no one can generate offense um, at this point and they also depended on him at times to guard some of the better wings and i think you're seeing some of the deficiencies that Brandon Miller in particular has on the defensive end that will not be solved, you know, until he gets some time to size up, strength up, 
and and look at a lot of film from this rookie season to get better. Just learn about some of these matchups that he's facing. Difficult every night. Dante DiVincenzo uh, was on fire in this game. Jalen Brunson, when he was switched on to him, it's just difficult matchup night in and night out when you're starting as a rookie. And so he's he's learning through that process. But you're right. I mean, Terry Rozier being without him um, has really ripped a hole in this team. And yeah. they're going – look – they're going to lose a lot of games, but I think they have to find some way to get out of this complete tailspin so that they can find a way to play well, you know, the rest of the season. So, so we'll see that. And I, and Clifford tried something new in this game, went to a different starting lineup, decided to go with Cody Martin at the point guard position. He had eight assists, but also had five turnovers, and then uh, started PJ as well. So it was Martin, Miller, Bridges, PJ, Nick Richards. Trying to change it up again, uh, or trying to change it up a little bit without Lamelo Ball on the floor, but it was difficult to get any kind of playmaking going without a traditional point guard on the floor, and so it fell to go- a guy like Brandon Miller to go and create for himself, and he was able to do that. He he tied a career high in points with 29, and David he tied that career high uh, that he set initially on November 28th against the New York Knicks. So That's this right. guy loves playing New York. Uh, He did it on 11 of 19 shooting to go with, here's a stat I love, seven rebounds, three assists, and a block shot. What did you see from the Rook? Well, yeah, and he left that Knicks game in November early. Uh, if you'll remember, he yeah. he got there was an injury, so he could have gone for more, likely would have in that matchup. You love what you're seeing from – I can't believe I just did that. You you love it, Doug. You love what you're seeing I do love from it. Brandon Miller. <laughs> There's no question I love it. <laughs> uh, there was a couple plays in there, but what I really liked from him was you saw it after he hit a couple shots in a row and they went to a break. I don't know if he forced a timeout because it's still like a 20-point game, but he's yelling at his teammates, give me the ball, give me the bleeping ball. And you can see him asking for it, wanting it. And, and it just went through my mind, like how – I mean, how long do we go or how long does it take for this team to become his? Mm. I mean, you start thinking about it. You know, he's out there. I know this is LaMelo's team. Uh-oh. You know, he's got Are a lot of energy. Are we starting the conversation already? Are we, whose team saying, is it? I'm just saying you see this quite a bit when you've got two young guys, one that's been there a few years. You look at Minnesota. That's clearly Ant's team now. It was Carl Anthony Towns. Completely mm-hmm. different scenarios, but look, when you got a guy that impress that, that puts his impressions on the game at this young of age, as he does, I mean, the same conversation happened honestly when Lamelo came in. It was clear that he was the best player on the team. I'm not saying Brandon Miller's there yet, but look, you mentioned the defense; they're asking him to carry a lot of the load on on uh, offense. He's finding his shots. They're asking him to do a lot as a rookie. And like I said, I love seeing the fact that he wanted the ball. He's asking for the ball. That's not something that we've seen from a rookie because one, <laughs> not many of them have been able to to make shots at his rate and not many of them have been vocal enough in game to demand that. Right. And so there's an interest, interesting shift going on here. You know, Terry's not there. Uh, you don't know what's going to happen with miles PJ, really anyone else on this roster outside of LaMelo and Brandon Miller and, and Mark Williams, I guess. But right now, You know, the mantle is there for the taking on who is going to lead this team through these very choppy waters. And, like, you like what you're seeing. He's starting to get some national notice as well. Uh, I I did hear, I think it was Bill Simmons' podcast, he's not even listed on the odds for Rookie of the Year, which is just a slap in the face and really more about the Hornets than anything else. But he's starting to well, get. It's more that. about the two. Well, yes, I mean, yeah. when you're losing, well, that's going it's to also happen. about Wimby and Chet. And, yeah, it's and about the, the fact names. that there are two literal aliens. Yeah, <laughs> that are, exactly. That are in his class. I mean, that's exactly. Just be difficult. But you'd like look if we were doing some odds, you'd like to see those long odds for Brandon Miller. You know, you never know what happens. You never know with the 65 game limit or and, and stuff like that. You know, uh, could he could he sneak in there and you get some good odds? But point being. Dude, he's 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 playing well above what any of us thought he would do at this point and providing, you know, you've called for like 20, you called for like the 30 to 40 point output output game, right? I mean, it mm-hmm. feels like it's coming, especially with all these people out and him getting in a groove here. Uh so look, there's the silver lining. If you want it, that's it. Uh <laughs> we could search for some other ones, but that's the obvious one. Yeah, he continues to give Hornets fans a reason to tune into these games just to say that you watched him win, uh, you know, because I think it's just a question of when, not if, uh, he reaches that all-star and and hopefully that all-NBA level. 
Uh, so I question whether he might be hitting a rookie wall because prior to this game, he had two stinkers, one because of foul trouble and and one uh, just was not able to hit his three ball. And so I was questioning, is he about to really hit a rookie wall after scoring 20 points uh, in four straight games? Was it a blip or was it a legitimate dip? Well, he shut me up. This game, <laughs> this game did. So it was obviously a blip. And you look at his past seven games, if you go back to that first 20-point performance, he is he is averaging 20 points a game on 51% shooting, 38% yeah. from three. He's uh, three free throw attempts per game, five rebounds, 2.7 assists. Uh, this is one of the better stretches, if not the best stretch, of uh, his rookie season. So fantastic to see him doing well. And there was one other thing I saw. You mentioned him wanting the basketball, and I think there was something at the end of the game that says a lot about Brandon Miller. That's coming up next on the Locked on Hornets podcast. Don't go to sleep on the Hornets just yet. Plus, we're going to talk about LaMelo Ball missing his second straight game due to right ankle soreness, and head coach Steve Clifford, he gets ejected. He gets the cane. That's a rare occurrence. We'll talk about that coming up on the Locked on Hornets podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Quiz. That's Quiz with three eyes. Today we're going to have some fun and test your knowledge, your Hornets knowledge. We're going to test, actually, we're going to test David's Hornets knowledge. Are you ready, David, to have your knowledge tested? Oh, boy. Yeah, of course, always. <laughs> All right, here's the quiz question of the show. Which player holds the record for most points scored in a single game for the Charlotte Hornets? Is it P.J. Washington? Is it Alonzo Mourning? Is it Kimba Walker? Or is it L.J. Grandmama? It's Kimba Walker. With how many points, smart guy? <laughs> uh, 62. I don't know. <laughs> it was 60 against the Philadelphia yes. 76ers. Yes, uh, Jimmy Butler hits the game-winning shot, uh, I believe, in overtime. Uh, to win that game, he did have. He only has one fifty burger. He has one fifty burger and one sixty burger. The fifty point game came several years earlier against Utah. That was a win on MLK Day. So there you go. There's your trivia. Yes, Do you feel smarter, yes. David? Oh, Kemba. <laughs> Quiz with three eyes is the next generation trivia experience. It's also the world's first platform where you can earn money. Playing knowledge games. David, you answered that question correctly. You answered a couple mm. questions correctly. You could have won some money. And for Locked On Hornets fans, they've created an NBA quiz game where you can test your knowledge and win real cash. Play with friends or other fans and let your knowledge shine all the way to the bank. You can play without downloading anything. Just go to app.quiz.com. Remember, that's quiz with three eyes and start playing today. NBA quiz is the ultimate knowledge challenge for fans that live and breathe basketball. Basketball. Go to app.quiz.com to test your knowledge and win cash today. That's quiz with three eyes, just like a three-pointer. Play now, showcase your skills, and take home cash prizes. App.quiz.com, where fans become champions. More Locked On Hornets coming up. Back here on the Locked On Hornets podcast. Thanks so much for making us your first listen every day. Make sure to go check out Locked On Sports Today live on YouTube. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for your 24-7 uh, coverage of the top sports stories of the day with local experts from Locked On. So I mentioned going into this uh, break that there was one more moment that I wanted to talk about with Brandon Miller, and that moment yep. happened at the end of the game. They lose. Could have been much worse. They did salvage some things in the second, in that uh, later later stages of the third quarter into the fourth quarter, uh, but it was a bad loss. And Brandon Miller was caught on the sideline, towel over the head, mm. Vi- upset. I, I won't say very upset, uh, but he was obviously despondent. Is the word that I used in the every Hornets box score write up and LaMelo ball hand on the back was was comforting the rookie it's like listen oh. Oh, it's still his a- team it's still my well, team guy don't worry <laughs> well LaMelo has experience you know he's experienced a few of these seasons <laughs> now so he's, yeah. he's saying don't worry it gets somewhat better occasionally it um, gets so much worse and darker yeah. go on <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Brandon Miller, obviously he cares, uh, David. What what did yeah. you think when you saw him feeling that way? It's, I don't think it's something we're used to. I don't, I don't think we see a lot of that uh, with, with Hornets land. No, I mean, and you saw during the game, though, I mean, visibly, visibly um, upset or at least into it, uh, asking for the ball and just, 
even when he made shots, you know, shaking his head, that's kind of his move. It's like, I can't tell if he's like, they can't stop me tonight or if it's like, or he's like, I, I need the ball more or I just got fouled. Um, you know, we'll get to Clifford in a second, but he's taking it to the basket. Now he's getting the low mellow treatment out there, not getting calls uh, when he gets knocked to the floor. But you like to see that uh, from the young guy. I mean, uh, you know, typically – it feels like it's going to be rookies, you know, the the, the veterans and the, and the guys that have been around the block a few times, especially on this team, uh, there, there becomes a numbness, right? It's like, oh, boy, here we go again. Another Monday night, the Knicks fans are drowning us out. And I know that's the second time I've mentioned the Knicks fans in the stadium. I'm not I'm not taking shots at anyone or, or giving credit uh, to the fans either way. But I, I think you love to see that from Brandon Miller because he is a young guy. He's trying to make his mark, and, and he cares. Uh, so you have to feel good about that. Um, and I, I would like to – I'm not walking these back, Doug. I, am, I just want to go back and clarify. I don't think it's Brandon Miller's team today, okay? But I think this is a good problem to have if you've got two guys, you know, that kind of want to take the mantle and make their mark, which I think he and LaMelo do. So that's what they're going to build up off of um, it's just tough sledding right now, man. I mean, you, you know, you like to see it from Lamel, from from Brandon Miller. That's the classic head over the t- head under the towel is classic move. Mm-hmm. I've given it all I can. That's right, and and the result didn't turn out any different. Right. That's right. you know that's what he, I think that's what he's dealing with mentally. Like I left it all out on the floor. I tried as hard as I could, and I couldn't influence things because there are realities on this team. Injuries certainly. But also just general depth issues on this team oh. that that if they were fully healthy would be difficult uh, to overcome. You would send some players like PJ back to the bench and have some bench scoring in that way, but you would still be relying on a couple of players that you shouldn't really be relying on if this team uh, were fully healthy. So this comes in the same game. I was looking on uh, social media afterwards, and mm-hmm. a lot of people were sharing a clip of LaMelo Ball and Bryce McGowan's and James Booknight. And there's there was a, obviously like a joke or something told on the bench, and everybody's kind of yucking it up. And so people are getting upset that, that players are yucking it up on the sideline, laughing on the sideline while the Hornets suffer another blowout. And I've been through enough of these losing seasons now, David, where I can, I can now see the stages of the losing season and how fans react. And we have officially mm-hmm. entered the stage – of the no fun, no laughing. Like you can't laugh on the sideline. Like we do this every single time. There's always somebody laughing on the sidelines, and you go, "You can't do that. We're losing. You can't do that." So we've entered that stage. <laughs> yeah, like I said, you know, um, uh, first of all, sometimes all you can do is laugh. Okay, all you can do is smile. I'm not saying it's it's g- great to see, especially now. Here's the thing, Doug. If you're tuning in on Bally's or whatever platform you choose. And you see that and you sat through this game where it's basically yeah. been a 20 point, you know, you're not uh, laughing Heisman. You're, you're not laughing. So I get it. You've probably had to log in several times. I had to put in my QR code four times to just, <laughs> to just see the game last night. But, you know, so I, I get that from fans, man. I, I would not take it as anything other than these guys had a rough day at the office and they're trying to shrug it, shrug it off. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not uh, the end all no. be all or, or, or some indication of how much they care. And no. And I think LaMelo gets unfairly maligned a lot of times of not caring enough uh, of, and, and the fact is that he wants to win desperately. He does not wear that on his sleeve. He does try to have some perspective about things and think about like, I, I want to be great at basketball but also, like he just doesn't he doesn't wear that on his sleeve. He's not like totally right. emotive about it. Uh, and so I think people can look at that and go, well, he just doesn't care enough. And I don't I don't really think that's the case. I do think though that it will be good for the team moving forward to have a guy that can that can voice frustration, that can bring guys together and say, all right, let's get serious, and have someone that can be looked at as sort of a, a a player leader in the in in the respect of like this is a guy we all like like it's yep. good to have like you want a Jimmy Butler type that look you got to have a guy that you know if if everybody's friends with the manager there's a problem in the office right <laughs> the best work is not always getting done so i think in the future Brandon Miller might turn out to be the guy in the locker room that's like ah we don't really, we don't really like hanging out with that guy but he he does 
he does bring the best out of us. I think we might see the begin we might be seeing the beginnings of the evolution mm. of that guy. Whereas I don't see LaMelo ever developing into that guy. I think he's going to lead right. he's going to be more of a leader by example, but always somebody that sort of keeps perspective about the game that he's playing. Yeah, and you know as we look towards the reconstruction of this team, who's going to lead it next year on the bench in the front office on the court, you know, it'll be interesting to see how that is built up because it is it does seem like two you know pretty different personalities for for young guys i mean we all know and love lamello and how he goes about things and maybe we're seeing a little bit more personality on that end from from brandon miller man you're right maybe he is that guy and depending depending on you know what kind of personality comes in or you know we don't want to speak out of turn here but is the head coach next year uh you know it could be the start of of a new you know sort of culture here um for lack of a better word shout out heat culture so look it's it, something's got to change okay because we've been screaming uh from the mountaintops since even Kemba was here about some sort of leader uh vocal leader um who 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 does more than lead by example but also leads by example and they're still trying to find that and it's hard it's hard to cultivate that when you're getting beat by 20 on a nightly bait like it, it's tough to do that yeah, but at this point, it does seem like that's that's more likely to come from Brandon Miller at this Absolutely. point than Lamelo Ball. Because I think I, I think it was always the, the discussion about giving the keys to Lamelo on the floor. It makes sense 100%. because he's such a dynamic playmaker, ball in his hands, anything can happen, and such an amazing shot maker that it's like on the floor that makes sense. Off the floor, that eh, feels a little uncomfortable. Feels like we might be trying to wrench him into something that he's not like totally comfortable doing. And so to have a, a guy that can compliment him in that way, I think could mean big things well, for the I mean, team. Yeah, I mean, look, look, look. Terry was the guy inviting him down to Miami. You know what I mean? Um, you know, Terry was organizing those, uh, and we can make a bigger deal out of that than it was. But uh, you know, th that was that was who he was. He was clearly he had an impact on this team, and like it's Terry Rozier. So there's a bit of a, you know, there's a bit of a ceiling just. Uh, player level wise, like it's not a superstar doing it. It's a very good player who's had experience, um, and and so you know maybe some of that did rub off on Lamelo. We'll see. But yeah, right now it seems like Brandon Miller. Even when you look back at, at Alabama, like obviously all his teammates liked him and stuff like that. But like uh, he, he he has not come across, and even in some of those like interviews as. I don't know, you know, a stand-up comedian, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 he does seem like he will be a little more serious or lead by example and then, like, yeah. see stuff like he did last night, demand the ball. We see the real Brandon Miller when the game is – when the game gets tight and he wants the ball. That's the real Brandon Miller. We haven't seen that guy in the media yet. And you're not going to see that guy because he's a rookie. And if you sell that guy as a rookie, veterans would be like, what's this guy doing? guy talking like yeah. that in front of the media and so that's you're not gonna I, you're not gonna yeah. see that until until he gets an accolade until I hope, he gets a few yeah. years under his belt and i hope uh you know all-star weekend is coming up he should be there for the you know uh, the rising stars situation. game let's just you know hope some of that sinks in i mean not not that all-star weekend is where a lot of a lot of uh lessons or well, a lot of lessons are learned but you know what i mean it's not mm -hmm. exactly kobe bryant getting up at 4 a.m in uh at olympic practice over that weekend but you know it's his first chance to kind of rub elbows with the cream of the crop and the rest of around the rest of the league so the more stuff like that he can get involved with would, would be great yeah and we just haven't seen it's going to be so interesting the next few seasons to see them develop LaMelo and Brandon, both on the floor, but also personality wise, because like you, you went from like an era of Kim, really Kimba only. It was Kimba and the, you know, Avengers. Right. right. But, and, and then you have to go back to, I mean, maybe stack Jack and Gerald Wallace. Like I don't recall there being many like personality clash issues, although they were kind of different. They sort of rolled differently. Gerald Wallace yeah. is kind of a, a quiet warrior and stack jack is <laughs> anything but quiet the first but they podcaster. had yeah but they had two different roles i mean you might have to go back all the way back to you know lj and zo and that didn't turn out very well like those right. personalities you know so that's there's a, there is a there is a promise but there is also a danger uh, as we as we approach this so um it'll be interesting to see all that develop okay coming up next on the locked on hornets podcast don't go to sleep on the hornets just yet rapid fire 
third segment. I want to yeah. talk LaMelo yeah. missing second straight game. I want to talk about Clifford getting tossed. And our friend Rod Morrow had a pretty funny tweet about uh, some tales from the Spectrum Center from last night. So I want to get <laughs> to that as well. This episode is brought to you by our friends at BetterHelp. Around New Year's, around January. We're, we're almost in February now, but we're still in the new year. We get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're doing right. Maybe you finally organize that one part of your space and you want to tackle another. Or maybe you're taking your supplements every morning and now you want to actually eat breakfast too. A therapy helps you find your strengths so that you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. It just makes things easy. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA. That's BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash LockedOnNBA. We're also brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two or three. Now, not only can you bet on who will win the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which player will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. If you're like me, look, Super, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks. David, what's your favorite football snack? Quick. Um, cheese dip. My sausage balls. And placing. Yeah, pretty close. Some- Same family. I you have can, sausage yeah. in my cheese dip. You have probably have cheese in your sausage balls. I, I, right. You're right. Yeah. All right, play some super bets. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. More locked on Hornets coming up. Okay, rapid fire third segment. Yeah. Uh, David Lamelo misses his second straight game with right ankle soreness. Uh, are you worried? Because uh, I thought this might just be a second half of a back to back kind of thing, but now it's second straight game. Are you a little bit more worried about Lamelo's ankle issues? No more so than just normal everyday living with Lamelo uh, and injury <laughs> concerns. But yeah, I mean, look, take take this time. You know, do not rush him back in the middle of this this nonsense. Uh, so yeah, get it right, get it figured out, and and give him the time that he needs. Like it's not an effort thing; it's not a want thing. Um, so yeah, no, no concern other than just the ongoing concern of of, yeah, the, of, well, this- of injuries. Yeah, this is what I wanted because you, you hear LaMelo talk about it to Rod Boone and the Charlotte Observer, and it's clear that people are all coming together to figure this out. His team, yeah. the Hornets training staff, you know, everybody's thinking about how do we make sure that this guy is healthy because, hey, he's going to be on a max contract next season. Right. Like, let's, let's make sure that this story doesn't end in a nightmare. Here's what Clifford said pregame. Obviously, his health is the number one issue right now. It's not like we're playing meaningful games. I mean, they're meaningful. Yep. We want to win. <laughs> gotcha. We want to win and all that. He's our best player, and we got to make sure that he's healthy. So obviously, oh we're being cautious. David, that's awesome. That is so he said awesome. the thing. <laughs> Look, people are people are looking at these game results. You know, twenty plus point losses, back to back losses, and they're starting to speculate on the future of Steve Clifford. Oh, I'm going to tell you one thing right now: those losses will not get Steve Clifford fired. But if he keeps telling the truth like that, <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna toss him just like the refs did against New York. You can't be. Te- I'm gonna use the Cliffordism. You can't be doing that. You can't be telling the truth on this team. But he's right. That's right. They're not playing meaningful games. Oh my God! I would love to see the video of that. Just well, he probably had no reaction because he's a pro, and, and and you know he just he just it registered when he said that. But uh, I keep thinking Oops. on Clifford, man. Um, it's like they need to get the All Star break. They, they need to come together and just figure out what's going on. But like it's it's getting close, especially when you go through some of these stretches they've gone through here in the last week or so, where it's like, man, just 
just just let him just just let him exit gracefully like just uh, you know just give him his peace but i i don't know that he's like he's not going to do it outside of getting tossed from a game you know he's not going to give up coaching this team that's that's who he is so uh it, it just feels like this is really you're right when you send the first segment they got to figure out some way to at least write this ship so it's not a complete mess out there they got to get some guys healthy but he's what other buttons can he push you know he's got to feel that way he's like this is this is what it is what else can we do here yeah even before he got tossed i mean he sounds he's been sounding like a guy that has done everything that he knows to do he's pushed every button he's pulled every lever um, that he knows in his, I mean, he's got a lot of experience with a lot of coaches that have been through a lot of different scenarios. Some of them championship aspirations, some of them rebuilding. So, you know, he hasn't been in a lot of unique situations, this one not being terribly unique, but, but he doesn't, I don't, I don't think he has the tools or the necessarily the, the veteran experience, the personalities to kind of drive through this storm. So it'll be interesting. I mean, he's got to get some guys back. You know, you get Lamelo, you get Mark back. I don't know that they're gonna get Gordon back. This, this is all. That's that's a whole weird oh situation. God. Forgot about I, him. I don't. I think that ends in either a buyout or a trade or something. I don't know that we ever see him suit up again. But got to get some guys back in order to try to figure this thing out. And just in the sense of like find, finding a way to play well that you can vault into next season, especially with the guys that you plan to keep: Lamelo, NSJ, Brandon. Mark, you want those guys on the floor developing a relationship. You don't yeah. want that starting in game one of next season. That's just going to put you behind the eight ball. If the if the if the if the goal is truly not to rebuild but to retool, add some pieces and get this thing moving in the right direction, like in the latter half of next season, that should start in the latter half of this season. There are still like forty something games left to play. There's a lot of time to work oh some stuff God. out, even in the midst of losing. I know we're not even to the all-star break. No, you know what? If we hear if we hear Cliff uh, mention the word rebuild, that's when you need to start watching because we know this is not a rebuild. We've been told several times uh, if he if he lets that slip out like <laughs> in a post game press conference, his days are numbered. Uh, you, you're okay with him getting tossed because Clifford after the game oh was not God. okay with him getting. Hoping. He said, "You can't do that. You know, you can't let your emotions get the best of He's you." Earned it. He's earned it, and he went and he earned it last night, dude. He let a couple f bombs fly from deep on that ref. I've, okay, I've seen him get tossed from games before, but it doesn't happen a lot. He is not no. a guy that does that a ton. I've never seen him so emotional that like players had to hold, hold him, him like, back. Yeah. yeah, well, they didn't, it wasn't like he was trying to go after the ref in like a fighting scenario, but they were getting in between them. Um, yeah. Crazy. And, and I like the lady on the way out tried to give him a high five. I'm like, lady, <laughs> just well, let him a cop, There was the like a cop like giving him applause as well. Yeah. Uh, Clifford didn't want to hear any of that. He was, mm -mm. there's a lot of shame to go around on this team this season. <laughs> um, real quick, let's end with this. Rod Morrow, our friend at Rodimus Prime on Twitter, tweeting this. Every halftime, they bring some season ticket holders down to the court and ask yeah. them why they keep signing up for season tickets. Oh, Today, the dude said, quote, because we want to see a championship. <laughs> and Rod went on to tweet, we are truly some sick individuals. It's getting sick, guys. It's getting sick. But God bless you. If you haven't been watching this morning and you've been listening, go find the YouTube channel and you're going to want to look. This is all what you don't want to do for a visual medium. Uh, it's horrible lighting. Uh, the mm -hmm. background is no good. I think it would be worse if I raised these. Uh, but it would uh, this be is worse. just shit. <laughs> Just, if you teach a multimedia class or something like that, just clip this and say this is this is not what you want to do. <laughs> well, listen, we've got a lot more of these to go. David, you're going to be on this show a lot more, and we're going to talk about All-Star Weekend, which is something we actually enjoy talking about. So that's coming. Yes. Up. So stay tuned for that. And the All-Star jerseys are out. We were thinking about having that conversation this show, but we did not want to leave Walker out. He yeah. also enjoys talking about the fashion aspects of the All-Star jersey. So that's it's my team. It's Walker's, you know, it's it's, it's homeland. It's, so it's we home bring state. His favorite team plays there. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't wait for that. Um, all right. That'll do it for this edition of the Locked On Hornets podcast. Thanks so much for making us your first listen. Make sure to go check out Locked On Sports Today live on YouTube. Go listen to WFNZ 12 to 3, Wes and Walker. Uh, you'll probably hear an interview with Greg Olson. 
And uh, for David, thank you. Appreciate you. And thank you for your service. (laughs) Stay safe out there. Uh, And thank you for listening. And thank you for supporting the show. Uh, Go subscribe to every Hornets box score. Join subtext.com slash locked on Hornets. We're going to get through this thing together. The sickos. The one thing we do is we stick together. Okay? That's the one thing you can count on us for. We're all going to be in this thing together. We will all suffer together. All right. That'll do it for David. I'm Doug saying let's go Hornets. Go America. Let's swarm Charlotte.